We're back out here on this 1984 Mercedes, and I forgot the model number. 500 SL, absolutely beautiful car. And it got the receiver dryer and all the switches changed. We had a leak up there. We got 101,000 miles. Yep, we got 101,000 miles. As you can see, the interior is beautiful. This is definitely a keeper. This is definitely a car I would want. And uh, let you Mercedes aficionados out there see what we're dealing with. There you go. That is a beaut. So right now I'm gonna do the vacuum and a high pressure nitrogen test. And uh, I'm gonna leave it on the high pressure nitrogen test for a while. I also have the Rolls Royce. I think that was 8,000 or 11,000 miles on this Rolls Royce. That's the next one I'm doing. Actually, I'm testing the refrigerant right now. Let me get back to it before it times out. What do we got? Oh yeah, contaminated refrigerant. There we go, we got 134. Let me see if I could focus for you guys. Come on, focus guy. Goddamn apple. 9.6%, 134 mixed with 12. I doubt if that's YF in there. It's probably an old 12. Somebody's contaminated 12. Or somebody just put a can of stuff on top of there. What do we got there? Hydrocarbons? Nothing. Zero there. 4.1 cents. I, I was wondering why, as I was hooking up here, uh, it was depressing the cap. Some of the refrigerants come out and I could smell it. And I got that age old telltale sign of I know. It smells like a dirty fish tank. The bottom of the fish tank when you're cleaning it out or a turtle tank, that's how I always describe it, like swamp water. Uh, moisture, the acid content, it has a very peculiar smell to it. And uh, that clued me off to definitely run and test my refrigerant before I worked on it. So we know this has air contamination. We know it has two refrigerants mixed together contamination. Know for a fact it has moisture contamination and where is the receiver? I didn't even look at this one yet. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna hunt down the receiver. I wanna see what the sight glass looks like to see if it's all brown and nasty looking. Well, we'll come back to this one because I still have to do that one. I'll, I'll clear out the contaminated refrigerant and the air and i'll put it on a long vacuum i'll do a nitrogen pressure test and fill it up with pure clean dry refrigerant so we'll come back to this let's do the evacuation you can see we're at zero we're at zero psi right now and we're gonna go into a vacuum so let me uh open up we'll go to the low side here we'll see how fast can we get down to 500 microns on this or close and then I'll go away and I'll go to, I got a couple other jobs. I got vacuum pumps on down the street from here at two other shops. And I'll leave this under a nitrogen pressure test and I'll get onto that one over on that one too. So let's go. I'm gonna turn on the vacuum. Let's see how long does it take to go to vacuum. One, two, three. Go. So let's see how long it takes. Now this won't go into vacuum until this gets past 29.99 and it goes into microns as soon as this goes into microns that will start there it goes it's reading already we're into uh, 2000 microns how long has it been already we're going into 1800 microns let's see if you can get them both into scale at the same time and let me get the graft on there i forgot to turn on the graft and so you could see the vacuum dropping right there, the scale dropping down. And there you go. There you go. I think we're coming up on a minute right now. Now this is a, what was it, 1984? And uh, we're almost at 500 microns and uh, I'd say that's about 60 seconds right about there. You guys can look at the clock and confirm how long in 60 seconds did it get down to 600 some odd microns, I believe. All right, 666. And I'll just leave it there. Uh, well, I wanted to get down below 500 
before I put nitrogen in it. Once, once I see it get down below 500, I'm gonna pump it up with like 180 PSI or so of high pressure dry nitrogen and then put it on the timer and perform the high pressure nitrogen decay test while I'm off on the other ones. And uh, this will just sit for a while and then it'll go back into the vacuum and fill it back up while I get off to the Mercedes and the other ones that are sitting on vacuum pumps right now. All right guys, I'll see you later. And as you can see, we're getting there pretty rapidly. Let's see, there we go, boom. We're getting under 500. There we go. We hit the 500 mark. And, uh, but getting to 500 means nothing. It's being able to hold under 500. Now, I think maybe in one of the previous videos I've released, I can't remember if this had contaminated refrigerant in or not. I remember there was a leak down here at the site glass and it was our original 12 system. So it has mineral oil. And when they have mineral oil, it's really easy. Even though this thing's what, 30 some years old, 1985, yeah, heading, approaching 40 years old. See how easy it is to get down to 500 microns? Well, you usually can't do that on a POE retrofitted system. So if this was retrofitted at one time and it was open like in a body shop or somebody left uh, hoses open, and they contaminated the system with a high percentage of oil, mineral oil doesn't absorb that much oil, uh, moisture like POE or PA, uh, PAG oil or PVE. But because this was uh, clean, fairly clean and still mineral oil, there's no problem getting down to that point. Yeah, you can see right there, we're getting down into the 400 range. And so it's really easy. But if it had POE, forget it. You'll, you'll be, if it was ever, especially in a body shop where they left it open to the atmosphere with POE oil, you could be here sometimes an hour and still have a hard time getting below a thousand microns or you'll get to 500 microns, but as soon as you turn off the vacuum, it'll skyrocket up back to 1200, 1800, 2400, 3000 microns because of the amount of moisture being given off by the contaminated, highly saturated POE oil or PAG oil. But with uh, mineral oil, don't have that problem. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Getting there really nice and fast.